So the last 24 hours were extremely stressful for me. Um, I'm going out in the next, I have like 40 minutes to get ready, so I actually have to get ready, but I wanted to chat with you guys. Last night, Sam and I went out to dinner, and when we came back, my cat, Bean, the little black one, was acting very, very strange. She was staggering around and kind of moving her head like she was on like a sh moving boat or something. And then she started walking around in circles. She was clearly like trying to act normal. Like she'd come out into the living room to like say hi to us and to get dinner because it was dinner time for her. Which she We put food down and she wouldn't eat. It was terrifying. Something was clearly wrong. So we um, took her straight to the vet. And because it was late at night, we found a 24-hour animal hospital. And they said that she seemed relatively normal. They just wanted to have us take a look at her to like bring her in so that we could kind of identify the behaviors that were concerning us. So she was brought in to see us, and they were right. She was acting totally, totally normal. I mean, she was clearly scared or like hyped up because she was at the vet. She wasn't like staggering around and like going crazy like she was before. And so, you know, we talked to the vet about what it might have been. They thought that perhaps it had been something that she had ingested, but because it had passed so quickly, they were thinking maybe more along the lines of a stroke or a seizure of some sort, which can manifest in a lot of different ways in cats. And they just said like, you know, we'll just, send you guys home with her and if it happens again you know then we can deal with it then but otherwise there's not much we can do because she is fine now. You know, we went home kind of trying to convince ourselves that it had been the right thing to bring her in to begin with. You know maybe we were overreacting but it was very strange and then when we got home she calmed down a little bit and then once she calmed down all the way she started acting really strange again and this time we took really good video footage of what happened. I called the vet and told her that she was acting strange again. So we sent her them footage of her acting strange, you know, and it was the same kind of thing. She was just moving her head back and forth. She was stumbling around, she was spinning in circles. And they looked at the video and they said, you need to bring her back in. Whether you bring her to us or to her, or to a neurologist straight away, like we wanna run some tests and it's possible that we wanna, um, that she'll need these kind of neurological tests, but either way you need to bring her back in. So we decided to bring her back to the same hospital, even though they didn't have a neurologist on staff, just to kind of have it all happen in one zone first. And this time when we spoke to the doctor, she, the bean had continued to not act normal. I think that maybe the adrenaline or something of going to the vet the first time maybe canceled out any sort of weird thing that she was experiencing neurologically. Wait. Are you playing Amnesia? Yeah. <laughs> Sam just downloaded Amnesia. Um, he hasn't played it before. And I haven't actually played it, but I've like watched the whole thing on streaming because I'm a dork. I'm really excited to play it again, actually. Or, or like watch it. <laughs> I don't want to play, it's pretty terrifying. Anyway, so we, so she wasn't acting normal. She was failing neurological kind of basic tests where they um, take her paw and they flip it over and usually a cat like puts it back up, right? And she wasn't doing that. She was kind of like flumping over onto it. Then we basically had to talk to them about what does this mean? What does this cost? And they said that, you know, we can run all of these kind of basic tests and hold on to her for 12 hours. And if she doesn't improve, we can then recommend you to go to a neurologist because it's potentially something like she would need to see like more of a, an actual specialist to have it solved. <sighs> and we were looking at about $1,000 of basic tests on top of the $200 of just bringing her in and having her seen on an emergency basis and an MRI we were told would be probably around $3,000. So we are trying to just figure out if it is something neurological, what is it that they're looking for? Um, is that something that we can then fix? It's not spending $3,000 to fix your cat. 
um, it's three thousand dollars to see if maybe they can figure out what's wrong with their with my cat so it wasn't something that I was um, really wanting to jump on right away so we just decided let's do the basic tests um, and let's hold on to her and see what happens so um, that was about 140 in the morning at that point and they had told us to call them in an hour to get the test results so we came home and put on some light-hearted television and waited for an hour to talk to them and they said that all of her test results came back totally normal which is great <laughs> but that meant that she was either going to continue to be worse and need an MRI which was not a financial option for us or that she was going to get better and that it was going to be transient that it was going to pass and that we would maybe not figure it out we tried to sleep I went to bed around like 2 30 2 40 in the morning I slept until a whopping like 6 in the morning I just couldn't sleep I just didn't know how to respond to something like that um, Obviously, I don't put a price on my cat's life. I can't, my, my wallet has limits. <laughs> my, my heart doesn't, but my wallet does. And so I was incredibly nervous. Um, just kind of, you know, you imagine all of the worst case scenarios then at that point. And then at seven in the morning was when they said that we could kind of get in touch with them again. So I called them. They said that she was improving. They still wanted to keep her for the full like 12 hour assessment time but that we could come in meet with B and then see if from our perspectives if she was normal because obviously it's very hard to tell with cats in general and then it's much harder to tell with cats if they're normal when they're in kind of a stressful situation like being at a vet so then we we went to get her and she was acting normal <laughs> and, and she's fine now and I don't know what that means and I don't understand what happened it's possible that she did ingest something that they didn't pick up on we kind of are thinking now that it's possible that she got her hands on a bug that had been sprayed with poison we haven't had our personal apartment um, sprayed in almost a year but our building offers uh, bug spray every single month to all of the apartments so it's possible that a bug got into some poison and then came into our apartment and that's the only thing that we can think of that she would have eaten off of the ground because she's not a forager she doesn't like food really at all it's also possible that it was something neurological that it was a kind of prolonged seizure at this point we can kind of uh, just keep an eye on her and if it happens again then we can go forward from there. That was the last 24 hours for me, and the only advice that I can give to anybody else that might be in this situation at some point in their lives is to um, uh, take footage of your animals when they start acting weird. It is very helpful for the vets to be able to see the behavior that you are deeming abnormal. If you can catch it on camera, it is very, very helpful. What time is it, Sam? 4.54. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, this was the gallery that she was at before. But I don't know if this is the same gallery that we're in tonight. I love the buildings in downtown.
Where'd they put it? Oh, chicken legs. <laughs> yeah, you feel better? Yeah. It's very, very silly little. Oh, yeah. This poor little sleeve. Yeah. Don't be gross. Don't be gross. <laughs> what? 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 I'm so happy you're feeling better. Yeah. Oh my god, that was terrifying. This car behind me just put on its like secret sirens because I guess it was a cop but and we were all like stopped at a red light and it starts like honk like bleeping at me and I'm like oh my god I'm getting pulled over like why we're just sitting here in traffic like my tags are up to date what what are they possibly pulling me over for so I just immediately like scooted over to the side of the road and he just like drove around me and then turned his sirens off and kept driving like he just wanted to get out of the jam god give me a heart attack it was so awful. And like he just drove off and turned his sirens off. It's so frustrating. Like I have things to do. Don't bleep at me. Let me in, let me in, let me in, let me in. Oh God. Like I get it if you're turning your sirens on because you suddenly got a call and you need to drive somewhere, but if you're just turning it on just so you can get around me in the traffic jam. Like, go suck an egg. We are going to a pie day party. Sam is making dinner for us to eat really fast. So we had to make a pie in less than an hour. So we threw together a graham cracker cookie crust, or uh, Oreo cookie crust, with these kind of nasty gluten-free Oreo cookies. <laughs> They're not that bad. And then like rapid cooling the pudding filling in the freezer. So it's sitting in a little pot of water that um, we stick a couple ice cubes and water in there and it's cooling in there and I think I'm about to combine them because this is just about cooled down enough that was in the freezer as well the dish itself is still like lukewarm but I'm gonna stick it back in the freezer once I combine them there and we have like our little toppings so cut up these little strawberries and Oreos to stick on the top and the party started 39 minutes ago so we're right on time. I hope it's enough filling for it. I hope I don't just drop this whole thing on it. Huh. Yay. I think it's enough. Are you being art artistic? <laughs> So this pudding we made with soy milk instead of real milk because we don't eat hard dairies like milk and cream in this house. The crust does have butter in it but it doesn't have lactose at all so that doesn't bother us. Um, and we're not vegan, we're just lactose sensitive. So I'm just trying to push this to the edge so that it sets like of grabbing to it and of course the oreo filling probably has cream in it but actually i think regular oreo cookies are vegan like unintentionally because it's like also fake so i don't know about these gluten-free ones but all right it's moved out back in the freezer like people also want like special things, especially people that can afford it. Like, if you could like talk to them about uh, is my water obnoxious and everybody's like, 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 like,